So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you the basics of how I made this map. It uses coronavirus case data to drive a color change over time from zero cases in March to over 1 million cases in November 2020. Um, you'll notice a blip in the Netherlands just there because there was an outlier in the data for that country on a single day in July. I used geo layers to create the map and the country shapes, but I won't be showing you how to use geo layers in this tutorial. I'm just going to show you how to use the data set to drive a color change like this over time. So let's dive in. So I have my little test comp and I've created a little circle and the circle is going to change color over time based on the data that I have in a CSV file. And I have a dummy CSV file that I've brought in. It's really not super exciting. It's just a column that has numbers 1 through 150. For the expressions we're going to be using, the number of rows is important. It's going to determine the length of the animation. So every row of data drives a frame of animation. So because this has 150 rows, we have 150 frames. That's about 5 seconds long if we have a 29.9 frames per second animation. First thing I'm going to do with my circle is I'm going to put a slider on it. My um, slider is going to be kind of the link between my data and the rest of my expressions. So I'm going to call that data. So once I have my slider, I'm just going to go into it on my circle. And I'm going to define a variable that's going to return every frame number to me. So that is time to frames. Time. So all I need to do is choose my data and ask it to return to me two values, the first being the column. And remember, all of my data was in the first column. And After Effects looks at these data sets like the first column is zero, the second column is one, and so on. So all of my data was in the first column. So I'm asking it to look at column one, which is zero, and then ask it to look at the row number. But instead of a specific row number, I'm asking it to return every frame. And that's where my variable comes into play. So um, as we scrub through, we can see it's returning every frame a new row in my data set. So it's returning from 1 to 150. Now we have the data feeding the slider. We're going to use the slider to power our color. And I want my circle to change over time from a beginning color to a middle color to an end color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three color controls to my circle. Say color control begin. Color control mid. And color control end. I'm just going to choose some random colors, some fun things. Green, why not? Pink, sure. And once I have those set up, I'm going to go into my color fill and add some expressions. First, I'm going to define some variables. So let's see. We want to refer to our slider. I'm actually going to pull, pull us up a little bit so we can easily pick what down to our slider. And then I'm going to define each of our color controls. So we'll say C1 equals, pull up to our first slider control. C2 is our second or mid slider control. Oop. And C3 Oop. is our third slider control. So we have three colors. We want our slider to change every time it increases by 50. So change from white to green at 50, green to pink at 100. But we don't want it to just snap from white to green or green to pink. We want it to ease between each color. And luckily there's a way to do that. 
So we're going to add that ease into our if else statement. So if their slider is less than 50, what do we want to happen? We want to ease our slider between 0 and 50, color 1 and color 2. Else, ease our slider between 50 and 100, colors 2 and color 3. And some of you probably already noticed, I have a weird slash in there. And here we go. Begin at zero, going up and up and up until we hit 50. And then we're sliding, sliding, sliding until we hit 100. And we're in our final range. But let's say we want four colors, we don't want three. We want the animation to end on, say, yellow. I just need to add another color control. And we'll call this one for real end and we'll make it yellow. And then we have to add another variable in. So our var oops. variable four equals our last color. And we're just going to have to swap around our if else statement just a little bit. So in the end, I'm going to add another else statement. Else and a final ease between our slider. We want our slider to ease between 100 and 150, between color three and color four. And because we have another else statement going in, we have to make an else. If our slider is less than 100, we want to ease between color two and color three. So our if else statement reads, if our slider is less than 50, we're easing between zero and 50, color one and color two. If it's less than 100, we're easing between 50 and 100, color two and color three. Otherwise, we're easing between 100 and 150, color three, and color four. So we can go back to the beginning, hit play, and our animation is playing through all of the data in our CSV file. Each frame is a row in the CSV. Now, if you want this animation to be shorter or longer, what I did with my map is to pre-comp it into another comp and time remap it. So I hope that's helpful. I know with expressions, they're kind of like Legos. You can put things together in different ways, do things differently. If you have a different way of doing this, something that's a little more efficient, I would love to hear about it. Leave me a comment. And thanks for watching.